Have you ever been to the circus? If so, you might be like me and remember hiding from scary clowns. Or you might remember the fire breathers, acrobats, and jugglers. You might also remember the mix of curiosity and horror you felt when you first saw a contortionist perform. Did you ever wonder how they managed to be so bendy? Well, the shoulder joint is one of the most flexible joints in the human body, and it helps contortionists twist into their unusual positions. However, increased flexibility means decreased joint stability and an increase in the risk of dislocation. We have various ways of reducing the risk of dislocation of the shoulder joint, one of which is through our rotator cuff muscles. Never heard of them? If not, then don't worry, as we're going to talk about them in today's tutorial on the muscles of the shoulder joint. Before we begin, let me give you a quick overview about what we're going to cover in today's tutorial. First, we're going to look at the bones that make up the shoulder joint as they form the bony framework that our muscles attach to. Then we'll look at the muscles of the shoulder joint, discussing their origin, insertion, function and innervation. Finally, we'll conclude our tutorial with some clinical notes. So let's get started and talk about the bones of the shoulder joint. The shoulder joint is a synovial ball and socket joint, and we can see it here from an anterior view highlighted in green. The ball component of this joint is formed by the head of the humerus, which is a feature of the long bone in our arm, the humerus, whereas the socket component is formed by the glenoid cavity, which is part of the scapula or shoulder blade. As such, the shoulder joint is also known as the glenohumeral joint. After that short but sweet introduction to the bones of the shoulder joint, let's move on to have a look at the muscles of the shoulder joint. A popular circus act that some of you might have seen is the world's strongest man lifting insanely heavy weights or even people. One of his muscles, which will have been particularly noticeable, are these ones you see here, the deltoid muscles. The deltoid is the most superficial muscle of the shoulder joint, therefore it's the muscle that defines the round contour of our shoulders. Let's move on to some Ken Hub illustrations. If we dissect the skin and connective tissue away from the shoulder and arm region, we can see the deltoid and associated muscles more clearly. Here we're looking at the deltoid from an anterior perspective. Before we go on to discuss the attachment points of this muscle, it's important to know that the deltoid has three parts, which are named based on their origin. Anteriorly, we have the clavicular part, which originates from the lateral third of the clavicle. And if we change views so that we see the deltoid from a posterior perspective, we can see the acromial part, which originates from the acromion of the scapula. Finally, we have the spinal part, which again, true to its name, originates from the spine of the scapula. These three parts converge towards their insertion point, which is the deltoid tuberosity found on the lateral surface of the shaft of the humerus. So what does the deltoid muscle do? Well, it's actually responsible for several movements of the shoulder joint. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at KenHub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.